that You have new email at your terminal, Pathfinder. that even if I do find it, it's gonna cost you. And you know I'm always true to my word, so just get it done. I'm hearing the Ket activities down. I bet the Archon's still nursing his wounds. That means he can be beaten. The Ket can be beaten. People are waking up to that. Didn't sound like you were discussing Ket over comms when I walked in, though. Wasn't. I have a friend keeping a lookout for a lamp. One brought from home, but stolen in the revolt. I didn't think you were so sentimental. I'm not the only one. Suvi has her father's antique instruments, Cora her Asari prayer book, and Liam has... the junk that Liam collects. These things are important. They remind us where we came from. I know what you mean. I never want to forget what I left behind. Even as we look forward to the future, yes. So what's so special about this lamp? It's awful. It's got a butt-naked Asari for the stand, and she's holding... a moon. One of your prized possessions is a really ugly lamp? The foreman at my first job had this lamp. When he was mean, I'd focus on it so he wouldn't see me upset. Now I keep it so I remember where I started. Most of my life was doing stuff to survive, taking shit from assholes, or... being one. I don't have to do that anymore. I can start over. Something honest. Honest work? Vetra, you'd be an awful farmer. Yeah, you don't know that. Point is, I could be anything. For a while, I didn't care that I'd lost the lamp. Everything was a mess and it just didn't matter. But we've made progress, Ryder. Small things matter again. People are daring to dream. It's nice seeing you like this. I know. I like being able to let go and do something for myself for once. Let's hope this is just the start, huh? Still thinking about the Turian Ark, Mason and Avidus. I hope Avidus is doing all right. After losing someone like that, can anyone ever be all right? I hope he... What did Dad used to say? Looks to those who look to him, and together, be uplifted. Wow, I can't believe I remembered that. So why weren't you on the Turian Ark? Our dad left Palavin with us long before the Ark even existed. I don't know if we really count as members of Turian society anymore. But who needs all those rules anyway, right? You probably have work to do. We can chat later. You know where to find me.
soup. The people you were training to explore the Scourge? Zoe's wife was lost out there. For a fellow pilot, one does the right thing. Like making sure her widow has got enough credit. It's the least I can do. The most is conquering the Scourge once and for all. Got a minute? I could use a favor. Sure, what do you need? I kept thinking about Sarissa and my not being a Pathfinder. And the thinking turned into a project on EOS. Can you help me finish it? What kind of project? I'll put the nav points in the helm. Come along and I'll show you.
Scent is green. Coordinating. Path is calm. First steps mark the brave and dead, old Krogan saying. Place. Ready? So where's your mystery project? Not far. Soil converter. No remnant terraformer, but it makes sandy dirt into something useful, eventually. Add seeds, some rain, and you've got a garden. That's right. You wanted a garden of your own. It'll take years. I might not even see it, but that's okay. Asari think in centuries. Lay a foundation, then step away. Let it grow into something you might never expect. Pathfinder training was my foundation. Gave me a whole galaxy of directions I could go. I don't need someone else's plan. Just a good beginning. The first seeds of a garden. One I started with my friend. What seeds do you have? Desert flowers and grasses from across the Milky Way. Colors we don't even have names for. When they've prepared the ground. Roses, someday. Ready? One, 
to... That's it. Good, you're here. Yeah, so listen, she's only got a minute or two, and she's in rare form today, just to warn you. She's here kickstarting repopulation protocols, reversing the chemical procreation blockers for colonists. Calls it boosting the batter. She's gonna talk your ear off about your civic duty as a man. That is what she's here to do. The woman takes her job seriously. Hey, if you're cool with it. I mean, makes no never mind to me. No chance I'll ever oops a baby into the world. Am I interrupting something? Ah, Jill. About time. This is... Save it. I asked you both to stop by, remember? Ryder, pleasure. I know we're all very busy, so I have only one question for you. Sure, go ahead. What the hell did you do to him? It's like he's an adult or something. He can even have a mature conversation without it degrading into pot shots. Unless I take it there. What's your secret? I have nothing to do with it. It's all him. I call bullshit on that. It's definitely your influence. Something. Maybe all these years you thought you knew me, you were sadly mistaken. You wish. Okay, you're both off the hook. So glad I got to meet you, Ryder. Likewise. Pathfinder, I hear you're to thank for a physics-defying atmosphere processor. That's me. I'm Ryder. Hanley Abrams, Director of Scientific Research on EOS, and Ryder of papers that start what the hell weather. Since we're prioritizing military defenses, we may be asking that question for a while. But, new galaxy, new world, and a really new start. Gotta keep up. How can I help you? 
How do you feel about EOS having a military outpost? Honestly, I don't like it much. This isn't what the initiative's for, is it? We need to study EOS, understand the remnant tech, but our budget's earmarked for military research. Activating that vault changed the planet. Anything to worry about? Looking at data from the other outposts, whatever these vaults are doing seems to be permanent and beneficial, so far. But the storms show no signs of returning, and I know who to contact for remnant tech support. I'll take it. What do you make of Lieutenant Bradley? I like that he'll hang up on Director Tan to help someone carry a bag of cement. Bradley would carry this outpost on his back if he had to, and we'll make sure he never has to. I've gotta go. Keep up the good work. It seems like there's no galaxy free of people like the Rokar. For once, I was glad to have so many soldiers around. I've gotta go. Keep up the good work. Ascent is go. Leaving Atmo. All clear. I think Lexi wanted to speak to you. You have new email at your terminal, Pathfinder. Move your arm again? Readings won't change, Doc. Your prosthetics are sinking properly. Your neuropathy-induced pain levels are... consistent. Hey, I'm used to it. It's okay. No, it's not okay. You keep fighting smart, you hear me? You don't have much left in terms of organ redundancies. Uh, <clears throat> nah, it's fine. I don't mind. What's all this about? Follow-up scans. I keep a close eye on him. What do you mean? He's fine, just old and missing too many parts. And too stubborn for his own good. You love me just the way I am, Doc. Hmm. Don't get off that table until the scan is done. Can I ask what happened? Arm, side, hip, part of my leg. Strain balancing threading across my spine. It's all prosthetics and implants. 
That's a lot. Made it through the Krogan rebellions, watched my culture disintegrate, survived centuries as a merc, and all sorts of pirate shenanigans. A thousand years of combat experience, all it took was one idiot with a pack of frag grenades. But you're here, still standing. You survived. Yeah, but surviving ain't always living. I hit some dark moments. Implant rejection after implant rejection. Prosthetics not sinking properly. Everything hurt. A lot. All the time. No purpose to anything. How did you deal with it? I didn't. I fell right into that pit. Almost. But then some shaman shows up, drops the tiniest little baby girl in my lap. This one's dying, he said. Not worth the trouble, he says. Useless is what he meant. That's awful. It's practical, Krogan. Gave me a purpose again. Wasn't just about me anymore, so I got help. Learned how to take care of myself, take care of her. And she took care of me. You found a way to live again. We sure did. Wasn't easy on either of us. I'm old, stuck in my ways, and Cash... Cash has wanted to change everything since she could talk. Raising Cash taught me an important lesson. What was it? Took me a while to figure it out, but it's important. Parents aren't meant to be a goal, or a finish line. We're the starting line. Where you go from there, it's all you. Remember that.
The Moshai said you remember when the Ket arrived. My father's oldest friend was chosen to be Volt's ambassador to the Ket. The day he left, they embraced as brothers. All the Ket sent back was his badge and a hollow recording I wasn't allowed to watch. I was too young to understand why everyone was scared, why my father mourned for months. I can imagine how terrifying that was for a child. What frightened me was seeing how helpless my parents felt. All our leaders were confused and fearful. The terror made us hesitate. That's when the cat struck. They'll try the same with you. Be ready. The Moshai said you'd want to hear my experience with the cat, to learn from it. I do. Tell me about it. They had just arrived. I was on a civilian shuttle to vault when we received a message. The spaceport was on lockdown. Security concerns due to the cat, we were supposed to land on a nearby moon and wait for the all clear. Instead of landing, the shuttle captain turned back. Something felt wrong, he said. Later we learned it was a cat transmission to isolate us for capture. The captain had saved our lives. You can't have been more than a child when that happened. I was old enough to know life would never be the same. The Moshai said we should speak. You remember the Ket's arrival. One of them came to our city on a Val to offer lavish gifts. <laughs> we lined up along the street to watch the alien walk with our ambassador. As it passed, it stopped and knelt in front of me. I still dream of what it said. Young one, you are meant for greatness. The Ket lured your people into a false friendship. It worked. A month later, our council disappeared. Our city was thrown into chaos. And when the cat came again, it was to conquer us at our weakest. They're cunning. They know what you desire, and they offer it. Be careful. I think Lexi wanted to speak to you. We need to talk about Sam. Dr. Taparo does not approve of how we escape to the Ket containment field on the Archon's flagship. By stopping the Pathfinder's heart? No, I do not approve. We didn't have a choice. If there had been another option, I would have taken it. 
How can you be so calm about this? Ryder, Sam killed you. Yes, he brought you back, but what if he didn't? I cannot learn without the Pathfinder. That would be akin to killing a part of myself. Your lines of code, you can't die. Sam would never hurt me. Thank you, Scott. <sighs> Look, I'm not against Sam. I'm not against you, Sam. But my job's hard enough without an AI stopping your heart. Even to save your life. All right. I'll find a new party trick. Have Gil teach you three card Monty or something. Lexi, I apologize for any distress I have caused you. <sighs> and I'm sorry for calling you lines of code. You're more than that. Even if you don't have cells to prove it.